So we're going to focus on, again, school-related vocabulary this evening. You guys can see the red building in the slide with the red flag and the sign that says school. So some vocabulary related to school. This is the sign for school. Okay, make sure that your palm orientation is up and down. Teach, er, your person marker. This is a person marker, which signifies that it's a noun. So teach, which is a verb. And then you add the person marker to make it teach, er. Bus. So you, you could sign school and then bus. Bus is finger spelled. So B U S. This is a sign for friend. So this is the sign for homework, home and then work. Breakfast. So eat and morning. Eat and noon. This is a sign for noon. So eat and noon would be lunch. So breakfast is a compound sign of eat and morning. Lunch is a compound sign of eat and noon. And then dinner is a compound sign of eat and evening. This is snack. Now, some people like myself, I finger spell snack. Some people sign this for snack. Okay, hopefully everybody's with me so far. It's hard to know if they're ready to move on. So the pearls of all, perils of online learning. So classes, we're gonna talk about classes. This would be English. You know, in school you have to learn English. Okay, English language arts, which you would finger spell arts. Oftentimes you see it abbreviated ELA. So you can do ELA or English language arts. Okay, so ELA. All right. So to repeat, this is English. One hand over the other. Okay. And then English language arts. A-R-T-S. That's finger spelled. Now they do an abbreviation E-L-A. E for English. L for language, A for arts. So ELA, you can abbreviate it that way. So again, English, language, arts. And this is the sign for abbreviate ELA. Okay. This is reading. So like eyes going down a page. Here's your book. This is a book and then reading. Okay. Now this is to read for a long period of time. So just a little bit of a difference in movement. This is writing, like you're holding your pen or pencil. Okay. So just pretend you're holding a pen or pencil and you're writing on a piece of paper. This is storytelling. So hearing people tell a story with their mouth, in ASL, we would sign it like this. And I'll do that again for you. So in English, you would do story tell because you use spoken language, okay, and you talk. In ASL, in deaf culture, you would do story, and this is how you would sign telling. It would signify storytelling. Okay, if you're talking about chapters in a book, this is chapter. Some people sign it like this, if I can maybe hope to make you see. So either use a C hand shape, okay, going down the page. This is the sign for sentence. So again, in English, you, what do you write? You write sentences. So this is the hand shape you would use, and this is the movement. So it's what we call an F hand shape, and that would be sentence or language. Vocabulary. 
Also the sign for word. Okay, so word or vocabulary. So, so you have this hand shape, the pointer finger and the G hand shape and put them together. This is the sign for spelling. You're talking about a spelling test or they're practicing their spelling because the little movements of the fingers signify every letter in the word. <coughs> yes? So we have a question just to confirm language slash sentences are the same language and sentence are the same sign yep. and word and vocabulary are the same sign. Yes, really it's dependent. It's really contextual and content driven as opposed to which it is. If we're talking about I'm writing, you're not going to say you're writing language. You know, you're talking about sentence. Okay. Like if I'm learning a new language, then again, based on the context, you're going to know it's talking about language. So that's a key element of ASL. Some things are contents based, you know, writing sentences versus learning a language and then word versus vocabulary. Yes, yeah, the same sign for both. Good question. Okay, so now let's review. English. Okay. And then we have English, language, arts, or ELA for short. Reading. So you've got your V hand shape and your open palm and you're reading, okay. Writing. or to write a, for a long period of time. You just change it. Okay. In English, you know, this is just writing English. Storytelling in ASL. So you have your hands, they come together and then Telling chapter, which is a C hand shape against your flat palm. So if we're talking about we're starting a new chapter this week. Question, Sherry? Yes. Have you ever used a sideways letter V on your dominant hand rather than the sideways Q to signify vocabulary? Yeah, you'll see that sometimes. That's okay. That's more of an English sign. So it's more of a pigeon hybrid, but you will see that. Some people sign vocabulary like this. Mm -hmm. You will see this. So typically in ASL, we do vocabulary because vocabulary and words basically, you know, are synonymous. So, but you do see the other one. Good question. Okay. Again, sentence. F hand shapes for that. Spelling, okay, finger spelling, or vocabulary, uh, spelling test for vocabulary. So vocabulary spelling. Okay, any other questions? Before I move on to the next slide. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about math. So you see the M hand shapes. And I'll explain a little bit about why this movement is the way it is, because basically it signifies adding numbers together. Now we have different operations, of course, like multiplication and subtractions, but this is number, a flat O, we call it a flat O hand shape. And this is the movement you do. And then this again is math, a little different. M hand shape and a different movement. This is add. You can do it top to bottom. Because as you know, in math, sometimes, you know, you add things downward. And then sometimes you add things horizontally. 
like five plus two plus three, and then you add it together that way. So depending on how it's written on the page, if you're working with your child, you can do it up and down or side to side. Okay. Now you can also do this. This signifies total. So same, same movement of the hands, but just a different motion of the arms. Okay, so adding is either top or down. Total has kind of a twisting hand shape that goes with it. And we'll review these, we'll repeat them at, at the end of the slides. Subtract to take away, so your flat palm, and then you bring this from a five down into an S. So this signifies taking away. So add is bringing things together, and this is taking things away. So subtraction, subtract. Multiplication. So make like, it's a K hand shape, and then you push them past each other, the same movement and motion as math, but like this for multiplication. Division, divide. So flat, open hand, and we're splitting something, okay? So divide. Fraction. You will see it signed with an F sometimes, the F hand shape signifying the numerator and the denominator. I do it like this because it represents a symbol. It shows that symbol, that division symbol. Up, oh, wrong one. Don't do as I say, not as I do. Calculator. There we go. Calculator. So you're just pressing buttons on the calculator. This is counting, an F hand shape and a flat palm. And it's like you're counting beans. That's one way to remember it. One, two, three, four, five. So this is counting. Okay, now let's review this slide, give you another chance to practice. Math with your M hand shape. Add, either cross or up and down. Subtract. Multiply, K hand shape. And then divide. Fraction. Calculator. And count. Flat hand and then a nine hand shape and count. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Okay, now some science-related vocabulary. So, 10 hand shape, and then this movement, kind of iconically referencing pouring of chemicals. So this is science. Okay, science. Beaker, okay. So some equipment. That's something I typically fingerspell, B-E-A-K-E-R. Same thing with test tube. I would fingerspell these words first, and then I would reference what it looks like, okay, to show the tube. So T-E-S-T, -E tube. This is a sign for moon. If you remember the crescent shape of a moon. Okay, moon, little astronomy. Stars. Okay. Now this represents many, many stars in the sky. So just the sign for star is like this. Okay. 
But then if you do this, you're talking about like many stars in the sky. Showing all those little white dots on that black canvas. And then you can put your moon up there. So pointer fingers back and forth against each other. Microscope. Okay, so microscope. So you show turning the little dials to bring the picture into focus. Animal. If your children are learning about animals. Biology. Again, save movement is science, but with a B hand shape. So here's the sign for science again. And then this is biology. Chemistry. Chemistry, done with a C hand shape. Again, you know, referencing pouring different chemicals into your beaker. So that's chemistry. Okay. Now let's review those. Question. Go, on, one, go ahead. It makes sense division. Oh, wait a minute. It makes sense division would be that. Okay. Is there a difference between the sign for telescope and microscope? There is. Very good, actually. Yes. Um, telescope is done like this. A little bit larger hand shapes pointing upward. Downward with a little bit of a smaller hand shape references a microscope. So telescope and then microscope is down. So yes. Good. Very good. Anything else, Sherry? Okay, so let's go back to reviewing science. Beaker, we'd spell. And then you can describe it. You know, it's glass and it's kind of a wider shaped cylindrical container or whatever, you know, the per particular container looks like in science labs. Sometimes they have a lot of different shaped glass containers. Some are small, some are more heavy and round at the bottom with smaller tops. Some are very wide, some are like an Earl and Meyer flask. So you just describe that different shape. But if you're not sure, you know, you can fingerspell the word and then just describe what it looks like. B-E-A-K-E-R. Test tube. So this is test. And then again, you would describe the shape. Moon, okay. stars, and lots of stars in the sky. Okay, notice the non-manual on my, on my mouth. Kind of puffing out your cheeks means a large amount of something. Microscope pointed down, telescope pointed up. Animal. biology with B hand shapes and chemistry with your C hand shapes. All right, very good everybody. We have a question. Yes. Is there a difference between moon and sun or would sun just be a classifier depending? Sure, this is moon and then this is sun. So you have moon is like this and sun is like this, okay? This is moon and sun, because sun is larger. So moon, sun. Good question. One more question. Are, sure. are other sciences just the same sign with the other initials? For example, physics. Is the science sign with a P? No, at, physics is actually different. So this is physics. Yeah. So this is physics. Interesting. So it's a bent V. So take your V's and bend them. And then like this. So physics is actually a little different, but good question. Chemistry, physics. I'm trying to think of that. Oh, um. What the hell? What's it called? Biology. Dissection. <laughs> when you're doing biology. Yeah, if you're doing a dissection on an animal, which would be this, okay? But um, biology we did. 
lab you would finger spell if you're talking about a science lab. So L A B. L A B. Are there any other sciences? Did I miss a science? Um, what about? Oh, astronomy, which would be stars. So remember stars, you do stars and then you do study. So this only, this is study. So stars, it's astrology or astronomy. I'm sorry, astronomy. Moon and stars and planets. That's the same sign as earth. This is a sign for earth. What about geology? environmental science and the law of science and the what the law of science law of science i don't know what that is the law is that no geology you'd spell mm -hmm. that typically you finger spell geography is a little different and then this is environment like as a person, those things that are surrounding me, that would be environmental science. Okay. And then law of science. And the law, law if you're talking about law of sciences, you would just spell out L-A-W. If you're talking about like the law of motion or whatever the case may be. The example was Newton's law. Oh, okay. So yeah, for, yeah. Yeah, you would then spell that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's ready. Okay. Social studies. So S S repeated social studies. S S social studies. History, H hand shape. Okay. Palm orientation to the side, and then this is the movement. So that's studying history. Geography, we already mentioned. So, cause again, referencing the earth. Timeline, if you're talking about a timeline, you would do the sign for time and then make your line. So for example, the beginning of time all the way up until present day. Country. Okay. Okay, and they'll also do this for continents. There are seven. So we have seven continents. And more commonly, you see this for country. State, you can finger spell state. Uh, often you'll see this, which is the S hand shape on the hand, which is totally acceptable. That's pretty much the most common thing. Okay. Are we ready to review? Go ahead, review, or do you want to ask questions, or we'll review, and if you have questions, just jump in. So social studies, two S's. History. Geography. Timeline. Country and or continent, but typically country. You can spell state or what you commonly see will is this for state. Okay. Now you notice on the slide, the picture of the globe, the green earth and the blue water. So you've got your land and then your water there. So that's earth. And we'll move on unless there's questions. Okay, next we're going to talk about elective classes. So we talked about our core classes and then, you know, you have the electives, which are more up to the students to pick. 
One question. Is country as in rural, not city, same as country? That's actually a different sign. Very good. Yes. Yeah, so when we're talking about rural, rural. So this would be farm. Okay. Once across is farm. One movement is farm. If you do it multiple times, it means rural or country. So yes, very good question. Great question. And I've seen country with the same placement and movement, but with a Y shape. Why is that? You do see that. People will do that sometimes. <sighs> if you're talking about like, again, this is very content dependent. If I live, you know, way over there on, in the country or in that country, that's fine. Some people will do it with a Y hand shape. Well, what's the difference? There's really, honestly, I don't think there's any difference. Both are pretty much mean the same thing. So it just this might be a stylistic difference. Okay, now talk a little bit about elective classes. So C hand shapes in this movement is class, art, which is your pinky and your drawing on your piece of paper. So a lot of different signs for, oh, for computer, okay. Sorry, repeating for the interpreter, computer. There are several signs for computer. And the reason being is because technology changes. So the way a computer used to look is different from the way a computer looks now. Back in the 50s and 60s, computers had, you know, those very large disks that ran on axles and they were very large clunky machines. And this is how computer was done, you know. So the sign was derived from the way it looked. And then as technology evolved over time and got smarter, then people signed it like this. Now you don't see this anymore. Now computer is typically done like this. So three different signs that you can see out there, you know, and as along the timeline, technology has changed and evolved. The signs have changed and evolved with it. So this is the old sign for computer, which you still see occasionally. This sign, which you really don't see anymore, and then this one, which is pretty much the standard sign now. I still sign it the old way. I still sign computer, even though they're, they're not built like that and they don't look like that anymore. So computer or computer. C going along your hand. This one, that was, you know, kind of a flash in the pan. You don't see that much anymore, but this is pretty much standard along the arm. This is a sign for drama or to act. Music, music class, also very similar to the sign for singing. If you're taking a class, it would be music. Again, context kind of determines which word it is. P, E, physical education. Not physical like this, just P, E. P, your palm orientation is down. K, palm orientation is up. So that's the difference between those two letters. So P, E. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So was the sign for drama with thumbs up? I'm sorry, didn't quite see from the angle. Thumbs so up. Mm -hmm. again? Sorry, thanks. I'll clarify that. Thumbs up. It's hard to see that way. Yep, thumbs like this. And then they're coming down. They're coming against your body and down. And drama, of course, as we know, has different meanings. You know, I take drama class versus, you know, you're very dramatic versus you're a really good actress, you know. So lots of different meanings of that word. So ASL, students taking ASL class. So robotics, some people will fingerspell robotics. Some people do robot like this. So robot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any questions? All right, we'll go ahead and review those. So art, computer, or computer, I mean the same thing, computer, C hand shape. And this signifies your table because your computer typically sits on a table. So that's why that's there. Question? Is the sign for concert and show like a theater show, the same sign? Okay, so concert is like this because concert typically involves singing. So concert is done like this. Again, very content dependent. Like if I'm talking about I'm going, you're not going to music. So you would know that it means concert in that case. Show like a movie or a theater production is done like drama. So either movie theater or you're going to a like Broadway show is done like drama. And or if you're going to watch a play or something like that. So again, play is also done with that sign. Other question? What about the sign for shop or home ec? Okay, so interestingly enough, so a long time ago it was signed VOC for vocational or VOTEC class. That's typically what we would do. We would do VOC. Okay, okay, I'm not, all right, all right. And then home ec would be home and they do like, they would do cooking because that's primarily what they would cover. Now, a lot of these classes were broken down into specifics. So this was, um, either using the three or the two hand shape. This was like mechanic class, like auto mechanic class. So you'd spell auto and then do mechanic. Carpentry, this was carpentry class because of some of the tools they use. So typically they were broken down by subject. So home cooking would be home ec. There was typically a separate class for sewing. So that was sewing class. Trying to remember what else we took, what other VOTEC classes we took, but good question. And back to the sign for concert and show, would you specify and sign the event first and then concert? Do you mean like the name of the concert? Sherry, do you hear me? Would it, the, it, okay, here we go. Would I specify and sign event first, then concert? I mean like sign event, then music. Oh, okay. No. Okay. So. You can, you can, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm really for, mm, if I'm thinking about myself, like would I say I'm going to an event you know, typically if I say I'm going, I would do like, I would do guitar, I would say concert or something along those lines. They would understand based on going. If I say I'm going to music and then I add a class, that's different. So the context is really going to give you the understanding of it more so than adding event. Some people might say I'm going to a concert and they do it like miming guitar. It really depends on who you talk to. I typically would sign it like this, but I don't usually add event. Very, very contextually heavy is pretty much how you understand things in ASL. Okay, okay, so we were on drama, music, PE. So again, P and E, ASL, if you're taking ASL class. Or you can do foreign language if you're taking another foreign. So foreign is the same sign as country. Sometimes you will see an F hand shape done there. That's again, a more English pigeon version, which is okay. But I sign foreign language. Again, you'll understand it based on the content or context. So, and then robotics or robot, R-O-B-O-T-I-C or robot. And what sign would you use for guidance or intervention? Mm -hmm. 
So guidance counselor. So if you're talking about a guidance counselor like this, some people will do this also means advice. So guidance or advice. Intervention we sign like this because it signifies to get involved. Okay. So intervention. So this is also the sign for guide as if you're leading somebody through something. So Okay. Okay, now some school supplies. So this is the sign for supplies, which I'm finger spelling, things or materials. Okay. If you're talking about school supplies, you know, if you do the sign for school before the next one, then again, content wise, we understand you're talking about supplies. And we would choose that word. Scissors. So your V hand shape and then your movement. Pencil. Okay, so like you're holding a pencil or come down from your mouth as you know a long time ago people used to have to you know wet the lead tip so that's typically how we sign pencil. Marker, you would finger spell. That's what's going to tell you the difference between marker versus a pencil or pen. Colors, I'm sure you guys know colored, so color pencil. Pencil, crayon, so again, the first time I would probably finger spell crayon, and then I would just do color right. Glue, really there's a couple signs for glue. Typically this is what I used growing up, glue, because you would squeeze the bottle, glue. This is a regional sign for glue they use in Maryland. Okay, so that's a regional sign, glue. And then people will also finger spell glue. So I do glue like this, like you're squeezing it out of that Elmer's bottle. Tape, H hand shapes. And as if you're putting a piece of scotch tape on something. Now, if you do it like this motion over your fingers, that's Band-Aid, okay? You can also do this for tape with your thumbs. So Band-Aid, again, same hand shape, a little bit of a different location and a different movement. Tape is either done with the H hand shape or with the thumbs. Stapler, if you're asking somebody, do you have a stapler? Paper. Now remember, school looks a little different. Paper, you have your open fives and the movement is a, a slight movement back towards your body. It's coming back towards your body, whereas school is just a straight up and down movement with closed fingers. Yes. So Janet says her daughter said tape looks like bacon. It's close, it's very close. The movement's different. So tape is just a little bit more of a, the bacon has more movement to it. See, this is bacon. Tape is just kind of straight across. But good, good catch, very good. Notebook. I would finger spell that the first time. Sometimes you could just finger spell note and then add the book sign, so notebook. Ruler, so this is a, the Y hand shape, measure, ruler, either way. So you can do it with the G hand shape out or Y, which is also the same sign as measure. So either one of those for ruler. Okay, any other supplies? If anybody needs to know, just shout them out. Anything related to school that maybe your kids are using that you need to know the sign for before we review these? iPad and backpack. Backpack, okay, so backpack is like this. 
Some people will do it like this with your 10 hand shape. This is more like a hiking backpack, school backpacks like this. Mm -hmm. iPad? iPad, actually that's coming up, technology. We've, hold on to that one because we're gonna cover that in another slide, but we are gonna get there. Tissues? Tissues, okay. Mm -hmm. Lined paper. I know, schools are asking for those now. Tissues are important. Mm -hmm. Tissues, mm -hmm. Lined paper? Okay, so you would sign paper and then draw, put your lines on it. So paper with lines. So or plain paper, plain. That might mean that might mean there's no lines on it or that there's no writing on it. So this is your lines with your pinkies. So you've got lined paper. So you can ask, do you have your lined paper? And then plain which is blank paper, scratch paper. That means there's nothing on it, no lines. A compass or a protractor? <sighs> okay, so typically I would signify, which one is that? I don't know which one that is. Which is the one that's round and half? Is that, is that the compass? I think it's a compass. Yeah, and this is a, okay. All right, so if we're, if we're correct, so that's a protractor, okay? That, I, I hope that's a protractor. So that's a protractor. That helps you draw a perfect circle around an axis. Okay. So you have your center. So this is pretty much a classifier. And then it goes, I mean, you don't have to hurt yourself. I mean, don't hurt yourself. Just one, you know, one kind of half turn. And then, and then this for comp the plastic half. The you have it backwards, the first I one. I have it backwards, oh. suit. Okay, the, fir <laughs> the first one was a, so the half circle plastic thing's a compass. We're not math people. Which one? No, you know, like at the plastic, it's half. Yeah, that. That's a compass, I think. I think it's a compass. Okay, so that's a compass. So basically, you would describe what it looks like shape-wise, and you can also finger spell the word. There's no standardized sign for that. You know, describing it, you can just describe, you know, the plastic piece that goes along the bottom, or you can do it with the two L hand shapes there to describe your half circle. And then you can talk about right angles with that. The half circle is a protractor. Okay, so that, all right. That just, that's other compass. Okay, I need to write those down. Okay, we will, we will write that down. Thank you, appreciate, appreciate that. <laughs> One more, hand sanitizer. Okay, so typically what we're seeing right now is this. So your X hand shape. Some people will sign clean, but this is what we're seeing out in the community right now. You can also say add that sign for hand, but typically just this is pretty much what's being understood right now. Okay, so now we're going to talk about e-learning. So e, you know, now in my day, of course, there was no sign for e anything because the reference is electronics, which back then we didn't utilize. And now this is the sign for technology. Okay, this is technology. Middle finger down, and then it touches on the fleshy part on the side of your hand. So now with technology, we're doing a lot of E everything and E references electronics. So we're gonna talk about E learning. This is the sign for online or internet. Again, your middle fingers go down, they touch, and then there's your movement showing that connectivity. This is if you don't have good connectivity, disconnect. 
versus being connected. So this is online or internet. So some people will spell online. It's more of a preference thing. Don't sign on a line because semantically that's not correct. Okay. We're not on anything. So online means connected or you can finger spell it. O-N-L-I-N-E. Zoom. Right now we're spelling that Z-O-O-M. Okay, you're not going to move your O's. You're not going to slide your O's. Just C Z O O M. C O O M. Zoom meeting. This is a sign for meeting. You know, kind of like what we're doing now where everybody's pictures together. So Zoom meeting. So video chat. So this references your camera. So you're gonna do a bent open hand. That's your video or video recording. And then you turn it towards yourself. So that's video. And then this is chat. So if you have a video chat that you're doing with somebody. Social distancing. Social distancing. And you're also going to see right now this. You'll probably see that on television. So this is what they're also doing for social distancing. So this is social. Okay, notice the non-manual on the mouth. And this is distancing yourself. Okay. So a long time ago, we used relay service, okay? And this was the sign, okay? Now, and it's a sign for video relay. Now we're also using this to reference doing a Skype call, doing a Zoom call, doing a Google Meet, whatever you might be doing. So you're gonna wanna spell whatever it is first, if it's Zoom, if it's Google, if it's whereby, and then this references, you know, connecting with somebody online virtually we're seeing new signs come out whereby which is another online chat feature like zoom this is the sign that people are using and you know as we go through this social distancing you're going to see probably signs come up for these very very common platforms but right now we're still spelling zoom distance learning is just done like this remote or far away okay Remotely or remote, so separating two 10 hand shapes, distance or remote learning. Learning. So you bring your hand up to your forehead, learning. Now, if you do it once, okay, that is the verb to learn. Doing it multiple times means you're doing it like it's kind of every day, like learning. So the movement changes. Okay, and then E, e-learning, e, whatever the case may be. So e-learning. And then remote learning or distance learning. Do you have a question? Sherry, question or we good? No questions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, quarantine. <sighs> Some people you'll see it sign like this. Okay, so V's and you cross them like this. Okay, meaning kind of you're staying in one place, you're stuck at home not being able to go out so quarantine it's very similar to the sign for jail or prison okay which is done with a forehand shape okay so but this isn't jail so it's done with only 
a V handshake, which basically means you're quarantined at home. However, you're also seeing this now. This is coming into vogue. Very same concept of like being locked down, being distanced from each other, staying in separate places, okay? So we're seeing this for quarantine as well. Okay, questions before we review this slide one more time. One question, mask. Okay, go on. So mask. Some people will do it with like a rock on hand shape. Okay, you'll see that because of the little strings, you know, that go behind your ears. So either the rock on hand shape, and that's a newer sign. In the past, we always did it like this with a C hand shape because it covered the mouth. Now they're, you know, we're seeing some new, very more descriptive ones because again, because they are so because they're mandatory now, you know, people are getting a little bit more specific and more detailed. So mask or mask like this. Okay. I wanna go back to online real quick. Okay, so online, sometimes you'll see, this is also the sign for internet. Okay, so again, internet or online, same thing. Context is gonna tell you, you know, what word we're referencing specifically. If I'm taking a class online, okay, having that class within there, to, you know, versus the internet's down, okay? You wouldn't say online's down, so in that case, you know, it's the internet, but same sign used interchangeably. Okay, so Zoom, Z-O-O-M, Zoom meeting, video chat. Some people will also do this for a video chat. Question? So a teacher in another ASL class used the sign for house and the sign for stay for quarantine. Is that appropriate? I'm um, depending on how they signed, where they signed stay. I mean, you can say that it's describing what's happening. How stay? Um, you don't see that being used too much. You know, I mean, it's a way. You know. That's more kind of, to me, I would misconstrue that as like the house doesn't move. You know, if you just did the stays or just the, this hand shape or the two V's, but it's a way to describe to your children. And they sign what's happening. I mean, it's very good for describing, like if you're trying to describe to a little one what's going on, that we have to stay in the house, that would be appropriate, you know, that you can't go out, but it's not the, the typical standardized sign we see for quarantine, but it's a good way to describe it to them, yes. And they signed stay within the shape they made for the house. Oh, so it was uh, house stay, like in the house, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, not, not the standardized sign for quarantine, but a good way to describe or explain it. Or another thing that people are talking about is like you stay in the house. So you have like one wall of your house uh, cabin fever, so you're staying, you're stuck inside for long periods of time. Again, descriptive and explains what's happening, but just not the, not kind of the universal sign for quarantine. But good question. So social distancing. or remote learning, so remote learning. E, e-learning, e-books, whatever. 
quarantine or quarantine or quarantine. Okay, I want, let me double check that could be, oh, okay. Okay, okay, so now some just basic, very basic, simple gra grammar, very basic, simple things. So, I know you don't need to do the no, just shake your head in the affirmative and do the sign for no, this means I know. The bent, flat hand bent. And then with shaking your head in the affirmative versus don't know, shake your head in the negative and pull your hand out and away. So no and don't know. Understand, again, make sure you're shaking your head in the affirmative. Understand, flick your index finger up. If I'm asking you, if you understand, you would point, make sure your eyebrows grow up to signify a yes, no question, and then understand. Now, don't understand, you would shake your head to negate it. So I understand versus don't understand. Same thing with don't know. Shake your head, negating the statement versus I know. This is a sign for finished or all done or it's over. I'm not finished. Again, shake your head into the negative. This is the sign for not yet. Okay, non-manual marker on the mouth. And then you just kind of wave it behind you. So not finished or not finished yet. Versus, again, affirmative, I'm finished my homework. So I'm finished my homework. Or I don't understand this homework. Okay. Hard. So bent V's and then hit one on top of the other. So bend your V's. Hard as in difficult. Easy. So hands bent and you hit one up past the other for easy. Again, difficult. And make sure your facial expression matches, you know, that your facial expression shows struggling or that you're frustrated. You know, so this is frustrated. So frustrated because something is hard or difficult. You don't understand it. Or that homework was easy. Okay, so homework, compound sign. No homework, so no, your O's, O's, zero. This means zero, so no homework. Or yes, you have homework. Okay, so let me see if I have any other slides. Is it words? Okay. How about please focus? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Very good. So this is please focus. This is focus. Okay, please focus. Okay, pay attention. This is pay attention. So pay attention. Pay attention is up past the sides of your head or look at me. So pay attention and then focus. So you're focusing down on something. How about principal? Okay, so school, principal. So P is your P hand shape, and then it goes down like this onto your wrist. So school principal. So 
So teacher, we talked about teachers, principal. How about again and slower? Okay, again, so you're gonna kind of bend your hand, flat hand and the other one's bent. Again, same hand shape for no. Again, slow. So one flat palm goes up the back of the other flat palm. Some people will do it with a closed fist. It doesn't really matter. Slow. Like slow down, slow. Hurry, this is hurry. So slow, take your time. Fast. So you have your open fives and they go into S's. Fast. Like, wow, you, don't, you did that really fast. You're finished your homework? Yeah. yeah, wow, that was fast. Okay, now just some very, very basic grammar to help you guys out. Okay, if you're asking a question, you signify that with your eyebrows. Your eyebrows go up if the question you're asking is a yes or no. If you're asking what we call WH questions, the who, what, where, when, and why, the eyebrows go down. So if it's a yes or no question, eyebrows go up. That's an important part of the grammar. Like, do you like art class? Do you like art class? That's a yes or no question. So eyebrows go up versus what classes are you taking? Eyebrows go down. So what class are you taking? Okay. So my favorite class is reading. What's your favorite class? Again, eyebrows are down. So yes, no questions versus WH questions. Also question versus a statement. Your eyebrows don't move much in a statement. Is that class or easy or hard? Is that class easy or hard? Is your homework easy or is it hard? Do you need help? Eyebrows go up for that one because it's a yes or no question. So do you need help? Do you need help? Okay. So any questions? I think we'll, that concludes the PowerPoint. So we'll open things up to any other questions, any other vocabulary or any other things you might want me to explain on. I think we got, I don't know how much time we have. I can't see the clock, Sherry, but. We have five, about five minutes left. Yeah. Um, oh, can, perfect. Can you please show the sign for need again? So need, okay. Okay, so hand shape, okay. This is the X hand shape, but the movement is what signifies, or the facial expression signifies what the sign is, okay? So for need, it's repeated. Notice the non-manual marker on my mouth, kind of clenched teeth, like need, like you need to finish your homework. So. Okay, and then- so X, this is the X hand shape, and then little repeated movement, need. Go ahead. And I learned school as learning foundation. Is that incorrect? Okay, hold on one sec. So this, one movement is the sign for must versus need. Okay. You see that repeated movement for need versus a one-time movement, which is must. And should. Mouth movement's a little different for should. So, and they learn school as learning foundation. There, 
All right. I, I've never learned that first assigned for school foundation. Oh, um, nope. I haven't seen that one. I don't know if that's a, if that's a pedagogy thing or, you know, typically we sign school. I mean, that sign's been around for a long, long time. So this is school for many years. You know, maybe it's a term, maybe it's an English term, you know, if it's foundations of learning or something like that, but no, the sign for school is, yeah, we don't sign it like that typically. Okay. Um, somebody is asking if we can review the first slide again. I did do, I am recording this. Um, because someone else is also asking if you can do the signs for early intervention, preschool, special ed, speech therapy, and speech therapist. Okay. Um, and we have just about five minutes. I think we can get it all in. So, okay, so let's review the first slide first and then I'll do those, then I'll do that vocabulary. So school. Teacher, bus, B U S, friend, homework, breakfast, compound sign of eat and morning. Lunch, compound sign of eat and noon. Snack. I, I usually fingerspell that. You'll, so you'll see people either fingerspell it or they'll do the sign. Okay. Now, and Sherry, you wanted, can you run those? Yes. Um, da -da -da -da, early intervention. Mm-hmm. Preschool, mm -hmm. special education, uh -huh. speech therapist, mm -hmm. and speech therapy. Okay. Okay. So just reviewing this slide one more time. Snack. Okay. So. Okay. So early finger, middle finger, cross the back of your hand. Early, and then the sign for intervention. That's typically what we see. Um, preschool, preschool, or some people will finger spell P R E school. Okay. Middle school. This is middle school. Okay. Junior high. And this is which junior high school and then high school. H S H S speech therapy speech your bent V speech therapy okay and then speech therapist you add that person marker at the end okay Special, this is special, education, ED, so special. Okay, so you grab your finger, move it up, and then E's out into D's. Same movement as teach, only initialized with ED, so special education. I think that was all of them. Okay. Any other questions? Was therapy the same as help? So therapy is sometimes done with a T initialized. Some people, you know, prefer to sign things less initialized. It really doesn't matter to me. So you can do therapy with a T, same movement, same location as help, or therapy the same as the sign for help, which is just a, a 10 hand shape. So either way, both are perfectly acceptable. 
but the movement, the location is all the same. You just either do it initialized with the T or with the 10 hand shape. A lot of deaf people are just trying to avoid that English influence into ASL and reduce the number of initialized signs. Some things, you know, are, they still do though, like family. So it just kind of is more of a personal preference. So therapy is totally fine either way. How about social skills? Oh, that's a good one. So social skills. This is the sign for skills. So social, socializing, and then skills. Grab the back of your hand and pull out. Also the sign for like expertise or skill. Okay, so yes, social skills. How about tutor? Okay, so T hand shapes. Again, same movement, same location as teach with a T hand shape to signify that it's a tutor. And then you can add your person marker. Good question. And the last one, iPad. Okay. Oh, that was supposed to be, I thought that was in there. Thank you for catching that. So you spell iPad. And then you scroll, scroll, scroll. Typically, I do it without spelling it because I know what we have in our house. The first time, like if we're talking about it for the first time in conversation, I would fingerspell it so we know if, whether it's an iPad versus a tablet. Otherwise, uh, after that, if it comes up again in conversation, I'm just going to do the little motion for scrolling because we've already clarified that it's an iPad. So iPad and then scroll, scroll, scroll. iPhone. You would do iPhone, finger spell it. Some people sign it like I or an I, but by your ear. I'm not crazy about that one. I think it's kind of awkward, you know, because I don't use it in that way. So I typically spell iPhone. So I P H O N E and I P A D for iPad. How about Apple phone or Apple sign? Um, so, okay, so this is the old sign for phone. You can do iPhone. Um, now this is Android because you know, the little green little icon robot guy. So this is Android and people will sign Apple for Apple products. I typically don't sign Apple. You know, I typically sign Mac in the deaf community. When we talk about Macs, you know, if we're going to the store, we'll say, we'll say Apple, but a lot of times we just say Mac. If we're talking about the computers, I'll say Mac versus saying Apple. PC versus a Mac. Yeah. Well, I think our time is up. Thank you all for being here today. I thought we were gonna have time to open the videos to see everybody, but we ran out of time. Uh, maybe next time we need to do an hour and a half instead of an hour and 15 minutes. Um, but thank you all for being Good. with us for our first class. If you have any comments, suggestions, please send me an email. My email is sherry, C-H-E-R-I, at deafchildren.org. Um, you can find me on the website. And we look forward to seeing you at our next class. And I did say we did record this. Um, we will see if, if it works out that we can post it. And if so, look for it on our website. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you so much.